All right, a new video for an unboxing, The Wild Unknown Archetypes Deck and Guidebook by Kim Kranz. Oh, my Yogi Tea message uh, for today, the beauty of the soul is constant, continuous, and endless. Okay, so let's jump in. I, I have at one point had other Kim Kranz uh, decks but never this one. So I'm really interested because it is that circular. Circular. Let's see. And as always, this is just for fun and entertainment. It says, accept all and reject none on the book. Okay. Okay. Oh, here's the guidebook. I'll keep it out just for looking. I open it up to the mountain, the ascent, the peak, the insurmountable, the mountain. Hmm. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Very nice. Look, oh, it comes in this neat little box. And underneath, so you see there's a diamond here. Underneath it, there's a pearl in the box. They're diamonds. Nice. Very interesting. Wow, pretty box. The mother, the pearl. So the very first card, the mother, the pearl. Hmm. <clears throat> okay, let me get the box out of the way. I'm gonna shuffle them up. I'll probably read a little bit out of the book. Try not to make this too long. This is just for fun. Kind of checking out a new uh, deck of cards to see. Okay, this is gonna be interesting trying to shovel these. Hey. Okay, because I figure they're all in order to start, but I'm not gonna review it that way. I'm just gonna see uh, what a couple of them have to say to start out with this fascinating book. And then of course, or this deck, I, I will take the time to read some of the book as well. Just trying something new, something new. Keeping things exciting for all of us. Okay, let's see, Kim Kong's and the Wild Unknown Archetypes. Okay, mother, it's still going in, in flow, even though, I mean, my shuffling wasn't that great, but it looks like we're doing it one, two, right in flow. Mother and father, the pair. Parents, right? The pearl and the father. Mother and father. One, two. Okay, let's see if I can shuffle it up and start. It still have me start in the beginning. Look at that. It's like we got to start in the beginning at conception, even. But before conception has to come courtship, right? Hmm. And love. Okay, this one. The mentor. Hmm. Number six, the owl. Wisdom. <laughs> if I tie this in with the spirit animals, um, and she also does have a spirit animal deck. I don't have it in here. I, I used to, but very nice. But the other spirit animal by Jody Burks, Ma, the owl is magic and wisdom and seeing through deception. The mentor. So this is someone like to look up to. Maybe even your parents, right? Your mother, your father, look up to them. All right. For wisdom. The king. Oh, there's a hair. Twelve. The king. Set not by the Peter site and Labradite. Very interesting. And then one final, one final card. And then I'm gonna look into the book and say, tell you what it says in the book about these. Hmm. Wow. The king. Oh, there we go. Thank you. The village. Ah. 
in the Roman numerals. What's the L, guys? I don't remember. This is like, hmm. All right, so it's ending with the village, Labradite. Labradite is always about like protection and mystical things because it has so many rainbows and stuff. The beauty of the soul is constant, continuous, and endless. I always see, I have my uh, little sea turtle up here too with the Labradite. Which I always think about taking things slow, right? And wisdom and longevity. The Village. It makes me think of the show The Village by M. Night Shyamalan. <laughs> that was a weird show. Yes. <clears throat> okay, here we go. I'm not going to read all of it. There's a whole bunch of information telling you about the different patterns. Archetypes are infinite. What archetypes are. Archetypes versus stereotypes. Hmm. A missing hero. She has a, a pendulum here as well. Understanding the deck. Root, heart, crown. You can... Hmm. <clears throat> An inner quest. There's a lot of different ideas of how to read them. Like, um, how many? Four cards. We have five. Hmm. So you can set it up where there's the underworld, the past, heaven, future, and self. Present card. That's a five. The heroine's journey. Based on Joseph Campbell's story, arc of the hero's journey. The call. The threshold. The ordeal. The boon. The reward, right? And the return. The village. Wow, it's like taking a journey. Huh. The mother, the threshold. Hmm. The rotation. Hmm. Okay. Final thoughts. A mug is a mug. Okay, the mother, the great mother, the feminine, the source. Hmm. When light, it's she's glowing generative creative nurturing when dark dim exhausted controlling or limited go deeper read tao Te ching chapter one and imagine the mother of ten thousand things the mother is part of the trifecta maiden mother and crone because of the relationship between them, take special note when these cards appear in one reading. Hmm. Notice how the mother archetype is expressed in nature. This is perhaps the most balanced and benevolent form of the mother's grace. This is on page 62 and 63. We begin our archetypal story with the mother's love. Through her sensual, fertile, and life-giving energy, all creation takes form. Regardless of our birth story, each of our hearts beat for the first time in the warm womb of the mother, where she offered resources from her body for the building of our own. Yet her tale is not so simple as the mother, especially on the earthly plane, contains both light and dark aspects of the feminine with the best of intentions. The mother wraps her loving arms around her creations and begins to grip what she meant to set free. Hmm. The mother both nurtures and prohibits growth. Yes. She gives yet clings. She creates yet restricts. Amid this complex energy, the mother holds the key to the eternal challenge of love. Wow. <clears throat> That's beautiful. Like I said, go back. Gotta start from conception in the womb. The father, number two, the next page, 64 and 65. Hmm. It just dawned on me. Those can even be ages of, of parents or years of birth or something like that even. The great father, the masculine, the protector. Read poems about the father. Sharon Olds, His Stillness and William Blake's Little Boy Lost. 
Great, those are wonderful ideas. Become a student of this masculine energy. Watch the father in movies, in Shakespeare plays. See the father as a pattern, not as personal. When light, supportive, strategic, regal, kind, authority. When in the dark, disappointing, disappearing, devastated by failures. Go deeper. Mm, the Saturn devouring his son by both Peter Paul Rubens and Francisco Goya. So those are beautiful suggestions, right? To go deeper into uh, reading, reading more things, you know? Uh, the last, one of the last videos I believe it was about is time to read books. Hmm. Alongside the mother, the father resides in the central axis of the archetypal family. The father embodies both light and dark aspects of the masculine. Thus, he is infinitely dynamic and complex. His energy is strong and regal, embodying such virtues as honesty, wisdom, and loyalty. Yet, ironically and simultaneously, the father is often absent, literally or emotionally. Through absence or action, the father eventually reveals that he is neither a king nor a god, but a human being with many flaws and wounds. He is both the guardian and one who leaves us to the wolves. Here, yet gone, the champion and the failure, the father can never resolve or escape his duality. It is inherent in the archetype itself. Witnessing the father's limitations allows the child to grow beyond the family and into the world. Wow. <clears throat> now we're going to the mentor. Let's see. I have that as, if I remember my, it should be six. Ah, page 72 and 73. The teacher, the sage, the guru. When it's light, when they're in the light, they're focused, clear, bright, and remains a student. Lovely. When dark, self-serving, envious of youth, righteous and rigid. Mmm. <clears throat> to go deeper, the riddles of Zen masters and their students. Hmm. Keep in mind how easy it is to project power onto another. The expressions feet of clay and cult of personality exist for a reason. Right? Living color, cult of personality. Hmm. <clears throat> Although it's typically true that parents are our initial teachers, the child will eventually seek a mentor figure outside of the home to assist their growth. Wow, this is a beautiful flow. It is said that cosmic knowledge pours down on the world like a great illuminated waterfall. This can be overwhel an overwhelming force. The true teacher, though, is said to be able to hold this flow of wisdom at bay while the student, student sips from the focused stream. The mentor archetype has a gift for reading the room, for sensing the exact ingredient that will stimulate growth within the student, whether plain, pleasant or painful. The mentor may appear aloof or unavailable, harsh or tender, humorous or rigid. Their gift is to know what serves the soul. Ultimately, the mentor is in service of the greater cosmic good and aids in the elevation of consciousness. Anytime the mentor forgets this humble link and mistakes themselves for the source of enlightenment, the archetype falls into shadow. Right. In the light, is the mentor stays the student, not necessarily the expert. This is interesting. There was a time when I had the fairies oracle, the fae, and it reminds me 
of, I think even what the stage was in that, it was still being able to have that childlike vision of curiosity, even in elderly age, and humble. Wow, okay, the king is 12. I keep moving to the shapeshifter, a trickster. Hmm. The king, page 84 and 85. The ruler, the commander, the emperor. Hmm. The king. Once the king's relationship to divinity is broken or challenged, he often acts from a place of fear, scrambling to uphold his image and power. The king is necessary. He is a bridge between the eternal and the day-to-day. -day. It is also said that it is necessary for the king to die. This is the death of ego. Wow. When in light, benevolence, divine leadership, service, and nobility. When in dark, oppression, misuse of power, and corruption. Go deeper the Dalai Lama, Indra, Richard III, and Macbeth. If our lives are imagined as a kingdom containing the entire spectrum of human experience, the king presides over it all. Through the lens of the king, we assess the state of our land, make decisions, and rule accordingly. Therefore, the king must be thoroughly and regularly vetted so as to avoid corruption. Recognize the dual nature of the king, he is either seated in benevolence and strength, guiding you toward peace, or he is oppressing the weak out of a need to control. There is not much middle ground. Some of the, some of the king as the ultimate expression, some think as the ultimate expression of ego. Yet the great kings of mythology and history serve from an egoless place. They take their throne with grace and humility, knowing the divine uses them as a channel to heal deep and long-standing discrepancies in the kingdom. Wow, the king and then the village doing what's best for the, the group, right? Wow, very beautiful. Okay, oh, the lover, the swan. Sorry, I'm just kind of flipping through to find this next. The village, uh, the mystic, the seeker, light worker, the dreamer. I'm just kind of, as I flow through, telling you the destroyer and the healer. What is the L? I'm going to have to look up my Roman numerals too. I see that one's 30. I'm at 30. The places. Ah, this is probably part of the places. The heart. The cave. We're headed to the village. We saw the mountain at the very beginning, right? Oh, I, I talked about that one. Um, the forest, the desert, the bridge. They said the king was the bridge, the temple. Mm, dead end. Is that. Is L. 30, so it'd be 41, the village, 144 and 145, the hometown, the family, the tribe. When in light at this place, it's intimate, rooted, intergenerational and communal. When in dark, small-minded, gossipy, trapped and restricted to go deeper, Haruki, Marakami's hard-boiled wonderland and the end of the world. The village moves with you as it is more of a mindset than a physical place. Returning to the village is, an import, is as important as leaving it. This can be thought of as a completion or an integration of what you learned out in the wild. Beautiful. I am, I'm really impressed so far. 
this beautiful flow. I mean, it was even the final card was the return to the village. Right? There's some ego death learning from starting from the beginning of mother and father and finding the mentor to help for growth. And being the king of and being a good, compassionate, humble king that is for service, not for being served. It's like Jesus. <laughs> I, I, he's the king. Oh, uh, you know, he wasn't there to be served. He was there to serve others. Very interesting. But you understand this is also on a personal level of individual people. This the king is leadership. It's important. Hmm. All right, and then I'm going to continue with the village. The village presents us with a conundrum. On one hand, it's the place that feels most like home, the place to which you can always return. Nostalgia and comfort draws back. On the other hand, it's the very place you must leave in order to grow. Around the village, an unspoken boundary exists. One most villagers do not want you to cross. Though some support you're leaving, still you hear whispers of doubt as you venture beyond its borders, leaving them behind. The energy of the village is present anytime we feel restricted by a certain group, community, family, place, or ideology. It may have served us in the past, yet staying within its parameters will never satiate our thirst for life. Thank the village for all it has provided, knowing you will someday return. For now, the world awaits. Wow. Those are, that is amazing. I, I literally got like the chills and goosebumps. These are beautiful. Um, because this is just an unboxing and it's already 22 minutes and 30 seconds in. I'm going to end this there. Thank you all so much. I hope you've enjoyed. I'm really intrigued by this these architect um, cards and I hope that uh, you are as well and stick around for more videos thank you bye bye